How do you respond, Sir Christopher, to the initial headlines that people were being put into care homes from the community without any testing at all? Well, that's, that's, those are the facts. And uh, I asked Matt Hancock in the May of 2020 about the situation of care home managers who had refused to take in patients from hospital until they'd been tested. And I asked him if he would congratulate them, because by so doing, they saved the lives of many of their residents. Mm. And I'm afraid he couldn't bring himself uh, to say that he did congratulate them. He said it's all a very difficult question. Yeah. So even then, um, he was hedging his bets and, and almost thinking it more important to discharge people from hospitals without thinking about the welfare of the people in the care homes. The power that government took upon itself during the pandemic was totally extraordinary, wasn't it? It was, without precedent and totally unnecessary as well, because we have something called the Civil Contingencies mm. Act. Mm. The government could have done everything it wanted to under that act. The only difference would have been that it would have been subject to proper parliamentary scrutiny and they would have had to have been an assessment, an impact assessment of the actions that they were taking and those actions would have had to have been proportionate particularly and, and reasonable, particularly taking into account issues around personal liberty. And if those discussions had taken place in the House of Commons against uh, those criteria, then I don't think we would be in the mess that we're in now, because the House of Commons would have been able to scrutinise so the government's why? activities. So why did our elected members of Parliament vote for the Coronavirus Act, mm -hmm. get rid of their own powers of scrutiny, mm -hmm. and allow government to do what the hell mm -hmm. it liked? Why? Well, because they were sleepwalking into this, they were, they were I think, um, pressured. But I, I, I think, sadly, there, there are too few people in the House of Commons who realise that the role of the House of Commons is to scrutinise everything, even in an emergency. And we had the powers there to, to scrutinise, and we didn't use them. And I, mean, I, I, I went along with having a lockdown for the first few mm. weeks mm. because I, I bought into the idea that the hospitals weren't in a state to, to deal with it. But thereafter, I was against any further lockdowns. I was against mm. the mask wearing and all the rest of it. And I think a lot more of my colleagues would have been in a similar frame of mind if they'd been presented with the facts. But, of course, we weren't allowed to have them. No, and we're still not getting the facts. Yeah. Other European countries have done their reports, they've reached their conclusions, they're attempting to learn lessons for the future. The Swedes are particularly smug, <laughs> having not gone for lockdown and achieved a better result and less harm. When are, we going to get, when are we going to get an official inquiry? When are we going to find out what really happened? Or do we have to get it all through leaks? Well, I think if we want to get anything soon, we're going to have to uh, bypass the inquiry because the inquiry is on such a long scale uh, that when are we going to get any results? Although it's been put into separate modules and there's a possibility that some, there may be interim reports on some of those modules, I think we should press for that. Um, and that, that may give some earlier results on some of the, some of the key issues. Well, will you promise our viewers and listeners that you will go back into that chamber and jolly well kick and punch and Absolutely. do whatever you can do to get some of this released? Absolutely. That's what I'm here for.